How you guys doing today? As promised, the walk around video of my current setup. So this is a 2007 Toyota Sequoia 4x4. Right now it's not currently running 4x4, but I'll get into that in a second. So the front bumper is fabricated by me. This is a quarter inch plate, 3 16 plate, and then inch and a quarter tubing. CV antenna mount. Front lights are factory housings. I cut them, mounted a LED light in here, but I found out that you're probably not supposed to do that, so I'll probably end up changing this. <clears throat> I thought that I was in a remote location, but as you see, there's all kinds of traffic here. I don't know what it is about Arizona, but six months ago I left, there wasn't that much traffic, there wasn't that many people. Now all of a sudden I come back, there's like two or three times the amount of people here. So I don't know if they're giving away land and houses or what's going on, but anyway. Cheap light bar, it's got a yellow film added to it. Front and rear camera system, I run that on all my vehicles. <clears throat> Spend the money. It's like a hundred bucks on Amazon or wherever you want to get them. And uh, I have a monitor that's mounted in the, by the dash. I'll show that to you guys here in a minute. But those, having this camera up here, when you're going up over a hill, coming up over a dune, and you need to know which direction that trail goes, being able to push a button and turn this camera on makes a big difference. It gets rid of a lot of anxiety uh, when you're wheeling. So I suggest you guys, if you don't already have one, look into putting one in. They're very helpful. This is a Harbor Freight special aluminum fair lead that I cut down to fit on here. Harbor Freight 1200 pound winch. It has the 80 foot synthetic line conversion on it. The controller is not really here right now. It's actually in the back of the truck. I was gonna mount it under the hood, but we decided to come back to Arizona from Michigan um, and I just didn't have enough time. So <clears throat> front skid plate is just a steel skid plate. It's held on by some tabs. This is all quarter inch plate, the frame horn here. And then this is the factory tow hooks. I just reused them. They're free. And, uh, I mount a vise to this that I can drill brackets and do whatever. So it comes in kind of handy. So I just left them on there. I have some ditch lights. Front suspension is a reworked lower control arm. This is a Rancho 9000 for a Sequoia. This was the only shock that was available to me that was anything better than a stock replacement shock. No Foxes, no Kings, nothing for a first gen Tundra was available at the time. And as a matter of fact, I think all that stuff is still on back order. They've got huge lead times, 60 weeks for different stuff. I've been looking into uh, parts for my second gen Tundra and the, everything's on backlog. All that stuff is just way backlogged. So if you guys are building stuff, good luck finding shocks. Hopefully the manufacturers will get on it and uh, get stuff caught up for everybody, but I don't know. The factory CV, normally I extend them or I just buy um, an aftermarket chromoly shaft. I haven't gotten a chromoly shaft for this yet. Um, I was going to extend mine, but then I realized that I was going to drive back 2,000 miles and I did not have access to a lathe at the time, so it can cause vibration if you don't have a real nice tight fit on that CV axle. And when you drill it, pin it, and weld it all up, that little bit of vibration can cause them to fail and then you, it just would turn into a nightmare. So with my wife driving this truck the 2,000 miles back, I decided to opt to just leave the CV out. So it's out. This was a JBA upper control arm that I cut, modded, um, this is uh, using some DOM tubing. The steering link is DO DOM. 
everything's extended three and a half inches wider. Um, I didn't go wider than that or, or well, the truck is already wide enough as it is. Um, and I really wanted to be able to just be able to slap in an aftermarket CV from any manufacturer. So any, any Camberg or whatever, Total Chaos CV will extended arm <clears throat> or extended shaft will actually fit in there for you guys. So nothing fancy, just a gusset, extended it out, um, sleeved with DOM tubing, then burned in together. Um, I didn't really change the ball joint angle too much um, because I don't, uh, I didn't know how long I was gonna run it. I didn't even know if I was gonna like this setup or leave it. So this is all just a, a makeshift setup just to see if I like the truck with this setup or not. I may solid axle swap it. I may give it to my son. I just, I haven't decided yet. So <clears throat> you'll have to excuse my voice. I'm currently staying with my mom. She has a bunch of cats. I'm highly allergic to cats, although I love cats. Um, but anyway, long story short, the front tire has been moved two inches. Um, if you haven't checked out any of my other videos, you can go back and check all that stuff out. Um, I talk about different things and I show a little bit of the work that I did here. The snorkel is a 100 series Land Cruiser snorkel. This has been heated up with a really nice heat gun and then stretched out to match the A-pillar angle. It matches it eh, fairly okay. I didn't want to put a big giant wrinkle in it right here. So if you guys do it, do it at your own risk. I run two inch hub centric wheel spacers on all four corners and i didn't want to run the front one but i haven't replaced the factory wheels yet and if any of you guys know when you run a bigger tire on a sequoia with the factory rim offset the tire will actually rub against the knuckle up here so i had to put the spacers back on and now it's like super wide in the front but i'm actually i'm thinking of leaving it I don't know. It looks kind of cool when it's driving down the highway. So, rear bumper, spare tire carrier. <clears throat> this was all fabbed by me. This was using some leftover parts. Uh, just a standard pivot that you can buy. Um, rough stuff and barns, they all sell these little pivots. Latching systems, you can use different ones. Um, I use a very cheap generic one. Quarter inch plate. Inch and a quarter DOM tubing. All my bins are made with a Harbor Freight hydraulic pipe bender. Not the best, but they do the job. The main structure of the rear bumper is quarter inch thick wall, two by three inch square tubing. Pretty robust, I haven't had any problems with it. I notched it for my hitch receiver here. I burned that in. And then uh, <clears throat> I use a low profile polyurethane bump stop for resting my uh, arm on it. I normally don't run cans i don't like jerry cans i think they look kind of i don't know they just don't look good on this truck but i had to run them because we're doing a little bit of boondocking and stuff like that um as we came across the country from back from michigan and then uh, i used that to run my generator for my rv so it's nice having these to be able to go grab some extra fuel i couldn't find any roto packs or anything in stock back when I was in Michigan. So <clears throat> the rear suspension setup is pretty basic. Um, I haven't made my riser bracket for the pan hard bar yet, but I will eventually get to that. So my rear spring is an old man emu three inch overland spring. I carry a lot of extra weight in this vehicle as you're about to see. So these springs have worked phenomenal. They have a lot of articulation. I'm actually using a rough country shock for a second gen Tundra 
with a six inch lift. So this shock is actually 30 inches long. It's just a hair longer than the Dobson shock that everybody runs on these. It's not an exact bolt on. So if you copy me, you're doing it at your own risk. This was just a temporary setup until I found something else. And then I ended up driving across the country, 2000 miles, staying in Michigan and then coming back to Arizona. So for the last six months, I've not been able to change anything, but this is a grade eight bolt that actually threads into the factory mount. So the shock is actually extended out two inches. Now that didn't really change the angle too much. I had a little bit harder time doing the upper eyelet mount but overall it has worked extremely well i lucked out with the valving on this shock in relation to these springs with the weight of this truck um, it seems to work fairly well it's fairly smooth soft ride but it's not overly soft i don't get that cycling and extra cycles over uh, bumps and stuff through on um, the freeway at highway speeds so it does pretty well everything else underneath here is all factory um, I don't have any crazy skid plates other than the metal skid plate that's on my gas tank. Um, haven't built the front lower skid plate yet, but I will get around to that. As far as the inside goes, pretty much stock in here. I do have a couple little add-on things here and there, but I use a ARB deflator. I have a, a nice little air gauge here thermal sleeve in case I had to do something with the exhaust or, or whatever um, then I have some safety glasses I carry those this is the monitor that I use for my camera systems the back camera and the front camera are mounted and tied into this I just push a button and I can pull up my front camera back camera comes on automatically when the truck is put in reverse I have a switched power supply and then a power inverter over there that runs my radio charger. I just made a aluminum plate, bolted it in, and then everything's held on with uh, industrial Velcro, believe it or not. So I can remove it if I need to. CB, I don't ever use it, but it's in here. It looks cool, so I just left it. Replace the radio with a uh, aftermarket one. And that's pretty much it as far as that. The DVD system was already in here when I bought this and it's the lighting on it is horrible. So you can see I added this LED rope light in here. That was just for our trip coming back. My wife actually won this at an Overland Expo in Flagstaff about three years ago. So it works excellent. It's got two color option. It has a white LED or an amber and it's dimmable by that switch right there. And it comes with the adapters to either hook it up directly to the battery or to your cigarette lighter. So pretty nice little setup. <clears throat> Cancer hat, just to keep the sun from frying me when I'm here in Arizona. As far as the inside goes, shop rags, these are some of the lights and stuff that uh, I was gonna install but I haven't gotten around to it yet so behind the driver's seat I carry all my manuals um, this is a manual book for this truck I have a manual for my predator generator a manual for a couple other items my welder things like that that I carry with me three ton jack uh, it's steel it's heavy I'm gonna replace it with an aluminum one here pretty soon torque wrench strapped to the lower seat mount <coughs> harbor freight um no actually i think this one is actually husky so this is going to be from home depot ratchet strap i use it for all kinds of different things i actually was using it the other day to uh, pull a front axle over so we could reattach a tie bar on a friend of mine's jeep so I carry a lot of cool stuff. Just kidding. It's not very cool. It's kind of lame, but I don't have a house anymore. I travel the country in an RV with my wife and two and three kids. My two oldest daughters stay here, 
but uh, yeah. So I carry a lot of different miscellaneous tools, things that I've used over the years and I've learned that I need to kind of keep them with me on various different uh, repair jobs and different things when I'm helping people out. So that bag, I left it open for you. It's got uh, some ball peen hammers, different sizes. It also has a mini sledge and a square that I use a lot. Um, it has a C-clamp for when I'm doing brakes and things like that. I need to squeeze the calipers back so I can put some new brake pads in. Comes in very handy. The other bag over there, um, I'll go around to that side, but that bag basically just has wrenches in it. Open-end wrenches. Um, it has a couple crescent wrenches, different sizes, and it has uh, some vice grips. In the back here, I have some tire iron, uh, some different tool bags. A lot of these bags have different stuff, like this is a tire kit. I just put a plug on um, one of my daughter's tires the other day. Electrical kit, this has voltmeter, electrical connectors, wire strippers, all that kind of stuff is in there. I have a miscellaneous tool bag and then I have my winch bag. My winch controller is laying in here somewhere, but I still have to wire that up. I was gonna mount it inside the engine compartment. Just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, this bag has a bunch of miscellaneous specialty tools, files, different things like that. Camping chairs, can't go anywhere without those, so I have them all thrown in here. Uh, I was getting into these bags the other day, so they're up in the rear third row, but you can see I've got my weld helmet and my fabricating face shield. I use that. I carry a grinder, cutting wheels, all kinds of stuff and a tote that's normally in here but i don't have it in here right now sorry uh camping knife just a cheap one from like walmart or whatever and then i have a little keep uh cheap camping shovel fold up ones the ones that everybody hates i don't actually i i've wheeled this truck for like over a year now um, in all kinds of different conditions, sand. I've been to Moab. I've been to Silver Lake Dunes in, in Michigan. I, I've never gotten stuck. So I keep this. I don't know why. It's, it's in here. It's on a fist, quick fist clamp. Um, spare jackets, things like that I keep in there. <clears throat> as far as this side. This is a uh, gift I got, this little seat cover. It actually came in really handy. So I carry a couple specialty wrenches, 19 and 22. And for those of you who don't know, if you don't have a long travel kit, then those come in handy for tightening the lower control arm bolts that are the cam bolts, because they like to come loose a lot. I carry a little Harbor Freight special vise and behind the seat another Harbor Freight special tool kit. I also carry an aluminum block and some jack stands. I have some six ton or three ton. Two little ones, two big ones. I use them all the time. Cubby holes have tape bolts, different things, stuff like that. <clears throat> Christmas gifts in here, hiding from my kids, so. For all of you parents out there, you know how that goes. Dune flags, all that kind of stuff is in here. Those are for my quick release. Um, then I carry a spare serpentine belt, zip ties, standard stuff. front I have my first aid kit now this is left over from my Nissan Pathfinder build that I had and uh, I saved it it's got a tourniquet and a bunch of other special bandages and a, a standard um, first aid kit set up along with a CPR mask um, power supply that I use is from Walmart woohoo yay for that it's worked pretty good I haven't had any issues with it Spare rags, gloves, um, these are my 
hub caps that go on my wheel bearings that I'm not running currently right now because I hadn't decided what I was doing with the CVs yet. So, uh, underneath, the only performance modifications that I have is that fancy, super masterful Flowmaster muffler. 40 series, of course, because 40 series make everything sound great, even a lawnmower. And I have a K&N drop-in filter that's inside the factory air box, which is tied into my snorkel kit. My front breather, my rear breather are all tied into my, under my engine compartment. And uh, I run some ditch lights or a pillar lights, whatever you guys want to call them. And these are just uh, off Amazon. They're cheap, but effective. They do what they need to do. My sand ramps that I've never had to use are up there. They're squeezed in between the sliding rails of the factory rack with a bungee cord across the top to make sure the wind doesn't pull them out. Drove across the panhandle over in Texas without any issues, so the wind couldn't take them, so I still have them. Can't really think of anything else to show you guys. Um, I think that's pretty much it for this video of today. Uh, I should be getting some video of some of my friends. Vic, you guys have seen his Pathfinder around, I'm sure. Um, uh, got a few other guys that are probably going to go out with us this weekend. So I'm going to go play around. I'll be in two-wheel drive, of course, but, you know, got to play anyway. So that'll do it. You guys have a good day. Thanks for watching.